Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. Welcome to the newest, the greatest, the most spectacular show in entertainment history. Put your hands together for season three of B Movie Mania! Waka waka. Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B Movie Mania! And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Okay, welcome everyone to another season of B-Movie Mania. I am your host, Crazy Chris Hudson. And if you've been following along so far, you'll know that we lost one member to an unfortunate jetpack accident last season. But the rest of the Maniacs are here with me and doing well. I mean, well, okay, not well well, because we've all been turned into puppets at very great expense. So, uh, hey, say say hello, Puppet Mike Hayes. Uh-huh, uh-huh, waka waka. <laughs> I'm a puppet. <laughs> <laughs> and uh hey say hello puppet jason holes <laughs> uh, hi chris i'm a puppet too i liked for a moment i just wanted to pretend that i fired all the maniacs and hired two puppets to replace the three previous maniacs <laughs> that would get old if we just talk like that the whole show aren't aren't we already your puppets hudson you've made us watch this movie <laughs> that's true and I had never seen this movie somehow. So for those of you who didn't read the title or the website or wherever you get this, <laughs> yeah. I picked to open up season three of B-Movie Mania, Peter Jackson's second film, Meet the Feebles. It is a, it is a uh. charming film with significant cultural value. <laughs> it's, it's a film that should really be seen by everyone oh, yeah. that enjoys this oh. show and cult film in general. Uh, but unfortunately, that film was pulled from YouTube, so I had to pick Meet the Feebles, oh. um, and that's what we're talking oh, about. Oh, no. The the movie you originally picked, Neil Young's Human Highway, was god-awful. This is way better. I think I'm the only one who watched it, and fuck you that I had to watch an additional movie. I watched a <laughs> negative one episode, negative one for season three, and maybe I'll just give my own review sometime. Oh, no. Maybe fate ha got it right, though. The gods above fucking pulled it from YouTube because <laughs> that shit was boring as hell. And it's and it's it's, confu I it's didn't confusing see it. it was because, like you said, it's got Devo in it. It's got a lot of shit, but it's boring as hell. And thankfully, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> we're talking about Meet the Feebles. Waka waka. <laughs> yeah, you could do a, a secret lost episode, the, the negative first episode. <laughs> we're ordinary. <laughs> something, something, people. <laughs> Not a single one of them's a people. No, no, well, no. There was one person, one person, one human in this entire movie. He was also a puppet person. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but uh, hey, before we dive into uh, quick takes, Mike, I really hope you've got some uh, Morris Minor trivia for us again, just like the last time I picked a Peter oh. Jackson movie. Oh, I'm, I, I understand then, Chris. You're asking me to give a real early on car facts. <laughs> car facts. All right. Well. Here's a great car fact. Uh, the Morris Minor, which was featured in Peter Jackson's first film, Bad Taste, uh, is also prominently featured in this film. In fact, every single car in this movie is a Morris Minor, including the stretch limousine is a modified Morris Minor <laughs> to be a, a stretch limousine. So Oof. there you go. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Quick takes. My, my puppet mouth also, just so everyone knows, is the kind of puppet mouth where the bottom stays still, but the top of the head just moves back and forth. And it looks really awkward, but that's what the puppets here did to me, so it, it gives you a real headache. Uh, my quick take with Meet the Feebles is, 
Oh, fuck, I forgot <laughs> stuff in this movie. Uh, uh, I, gross puppets. Don't let your kids watch this. <laughs> All right, Jay. I I think you've got a quick take too. What when what is your uh, what does your Muppet mouth look like? Well, I'm just a bald tan puppet. So. <laughs> Like, like oh. there's not a whole lot going on with the felt here. <laughs> you just, you're, the, you're the very generic Muppet. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, like when I design an avatar on the Wii, it just looks like the default character. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of my puppet just looks like a default puppet. But, but I do have my the mouth of my puppet is greatly exaggerated. So as I'm talking, wow. my mouth looks like it's going a lot faster than it really is. <laughs> so for for my quick take. Oh, I just, I, it's like, not that I didn't want to plan one. It's like, I couldn't, like my mind won't let me do it. <laughs> um, I can say <laughs> folks, if this movie came out today, it would get barbecued by <laughs> critics <laughs> oh, God. and like everybody, like it, it is not a currently culturally responsible show, mm. <laughs> but uh, also I feel like it's kind of essential to see if you're into these kind of movies. Where's the masked masochist? Hudson? Hudson, what about you? What does your puppet face look like, and what's your quick take? All right, well, I'm one of the full-size uh, puppets, you know, that has an actual person inside it mm-hmm. running around. And uh, <laughs> But I only have one working arm because my puppeteer's other <laughs> arm has to work the mouth. Ah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, and my quick take is, uh, well, you know what? I just want to read it here because on here I have what the IMDb parental guide says about this movie oh, for my okay. quick take. So uh, let me just bring that up real quick. <laughs> Did you use a puppet computer? I just for picture that? your hands jamming on the keyboard really fast. <laughs> yeah. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> but uh, but here here here's what the IMDb parental guide says: A rat tries to rape a poodle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Despite the cast being all puppets, the sexual actions are detailed very realistically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There is some sexual dialogue. <laughs> there, some? Some. A hippo wears clothes that reveal cleavage. Oh, and more. And the rest of the breasts. <laughs> <laughs> a rat character is a porn director. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. A naked cow kills a cockroach by sitting on it. Yep. And uh, a cat gives a blowjob to a walrus. The cat clings onto the walrus's much bigger lower body. No sex organs seen. Well, not in that scene. Wow, thanks, yeah. IMDb. That honestly is what the actual description of the film should be on, like the back of <laughs> yeah. the VHS box. That just should just be that. And that reminds me, <laughs> like funny. this movie, I, I've never, I've never, for any other show on this podcast, written crazier notes. That's just what's happening in, on the screen. Uh huh. Like it's just crazy. All right. Well, before we get too more far into the description, I just want to give a little background of the movie for the few of you who have uh, never seen this before. Um, so it's obviously a puppet movie uh, made by Peter Jackson of Lord of the Rings fame. It's his second movie ever, and he wrote it with Fran Walsh, who also co-wrote Lord of the Rings. But Stephen Sinclair and Denny Mulleron. I hope I'm saying that right. Molaram. Molaram. <laughs> See you in hell. Prepare to meet puppets. <laughs> in hell. <laughs> That's how it goes. Oops. I think this was done in, uh, I think, ni- 1988, late 80s, somewhere in there. And it, it it's pretty raw. It's pretty raw looking. But it is... Oh, boy. Uh, mm. Yeah. And it basically deals with the... It's a behind-the-scenes look at an up-and-coming puppet variety show. It's kind of a soap opera. Like I, th- I feel, I feel like it's laid out. Like the storylines yeah. are very soap soap opera ish. There's a lot of sex scandal. There's a lot of relationship scandal. There's a lot of cheating and blah 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 back and forth. And there's like, I don't. Know, it's kind of yeah. it's very soap opera. I was just about to pop my cookies. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was just finishing off some paperwork. Travis, mean insulting me? Why that? Mouthed little rodent. I'll give him a, a good talking to. That's a good observation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a, just a few. I mean, it kind of follows a few different storylines. They don't really cross over that much. Oh, it's a mess. <laughs> it's it's just a total mess. But somehow, I mean, I haven't seen this movie in like 25 years, and it was 
I was going to say it was it was more watchable than I remembered. <laughs> it is watchable. It is watchable. Hey, who is at, out of the different storylines and whatnot? Just who was your guys' favorite puppets? Oh man, jeez. Uh, uh, I, I liked Sid the elephant a okay. lot. He he reminded me a lot. He looks like a Terry Gilliam Monty Python <laughs> cartoon. Does. Oh, like God, he does. the shading and everything of him <laughs> looks like that. And I, I always, I liked that. What's going on with the elephant? Oh, his deal is that, yeah, everyone's got a deal. It's literally a soap opera. His deal, <laughs> yeah, it is. He, he's part of the cast, and he has a uh, ex-wife uh, who's a chicken, and they have, no, no, he doesn't, wait, his friend, yeah. no, his friend has an ex-wife who's a chicken, but the elephant and the chicken slept together, a, an adulterous relationship, and had a baby out of wedlock. And so the baby is 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 credited as an Ella chicken, because it is half elephant, like a head elephant, and the body is a chicken. Hey, hey but you cannot prove that baby is Sid's, besides the trunk <laughs> of the giant elephant ears on a chicken's body. Who's the chicken's wife? Or husband. Do you remember? See, I thought it was the husband because I thought the elephant was talking about getting served with papers. No, no, no. The one, they're in a room. The, the guy who, the, the, like, it's the frog or someone is, is in the room. And the chicken wheels the baby in. And she's like, take care of my baby. He's like, it's not mine. It's not mine. And blah, blah, blah. And we know it's not yours or whatever. And then Sid the elephant looks at it and goes, well, he has your eyes. And that's the joke. Because then you look inside the basket and it's got the fucking elephant head. And so that's when you know it. Right. Is the frog the knife thrower or is the knife thrower an alligator? I couldn't tell. Yeah, I think I read he's a frog, but he looks kind of like a reptile. Can I just say also for the listeners, if you want to play a fun game, just take this episode when you've listened to the whole thing. And then just go back and just put the cursor on a random point in the episode and just see what sentence we're saying. Because it's going to be like, is the frog a knife thrower or is it an alligator? Like, it's just going to be weird sentences all show. To be fair, not all the puppets were as good as the other puppets. And the the, the version of the film that we watched had, was not super low quality, but it's very dark. Yeah, it was dark. And so it's kind of hard to distinguish stuff. Honestly, I think it was filmed like that because the VHS copy that I watched years ago was really dark too. I, d I don't think yeah, it was yeah. a copy. It was a problem with the, uh, it, well, I think it's the transfer and the overall transfer. There's an HD version coming out. PJ is restoring this, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say he's, yeah, there's an HD version, I think coming out later 2019. So I would be curious to see that. Oh yeah. Can I say what my favorite Muppet was? No. Or I, one of my favorite Muppets. Well, I'm going to anyway. <laughs> I, I liked, uh, I kind of like the fly. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I just liked his voice. Like, it was so stupid. Like, this little fly is, he's like a little paparazzi. I'm looking at a writer and a little extra on the side. I'm always interested in the little stories. Anything spicy or even funny. <laughs> God, he wants to get stories and all the dirt on all of the Muppets that are that are in the show. So he's like blackmailing people if he has to like any just seedy, terrible story he can get. And he, he goes up against uh, what, Harry the rabbit. Yeah. Who's got a little little uh, he's got a little problem a little problem. And he, he's just taunting him. He's just terrible. Yeah. And he flies around in the toilet and he eats poop. And just, <laughs> he eats a lot of poop. Hope it isn't yours, Harry. Yeah, that's then that's what he does. He's just like, yeah, Harry, I'm gonna print the truth. Yeah. <laughs> He's just God. terrible, but I don't know. Oh, that's something about it I found really funny. Oh, God. If you're queasy about seeing uh, a spoonful of shit go into yeah. a puppet's yeah. mouth, uh, Avert your eyes for that scene because it happens a couple times. <laughs> but I think that's why this is a truly great movie because, well, no, it's like the two characters you mentioned as your favorite were my least favorite characters. Really? So there's so there's something for everyone. I I liked. I think he was a fox, the director of the show. I don't remember his name. Oh come on, come on! I'm gonna talk. Somebody help him. Oh, the gay fox. Yeah, the gay fox. It was great. And his closing number in this movie is, it's really, it should be shown as like, when you think of, of cinema, it sh it's one of the crowning scenes, one of the crowning shots in cinema history. 
and the song is perfect. Now seems like an appropriate time for you to put a clip in. Suddenly, you must think it very oddly that I enjoy the act of sodomy. You might call the wrath of God on me, but if you try to, then you might agree that you enjoy the act of sodomy. So, what a what an amazing song. I mean, uh, you're closing the whole movie about butt sex, sodomy. Well, for if for context, that song comes in during the final performance. Like the whole plot of the movie mm-hmm. is they're like it's the day of a major performance that they're going to like live telecast. And so so it's all coming up to that. Mm-hmm. So during the live performance, the performance is going poorly at some point, and he's like, "I'm gonna save the show." And then he he yep. gets out there and starts getting ready to do it, and the 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 producer of the thing is like, "No, he isn't." <laughs> and then that <laughs> song comes in. <laughs> yeah, and the producer <laughs> yeah. is the walrus. Yeah. He's he's a big walrus who's into drugs and in all sorts of like other well, terrible well, things. Not just into drugs. He is a drug dealer, and he is. Married to Heidi, yes. the hippo. Yeah. Heidi is the just main together. star of the show. She's a giant. Yeah, they're just together. And Bletch, the walrus. Bletch. <laughs> Great name. It is. Is cheating on Heidi with the cat. And you get lots of really great scenes with walrus banging cats and getting blowjobs from a cat and all kinds of great, great sexy <laughs> stuff if you're <laughs> into that. This is like a furry's dream. Oh. Let's just put it that yeah. way. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I wonder if that's a thing. Any furries out there, let us know. But Bletch is also on the side working on uh, drug trafficking. And so a major side plot of this mm-hmm. movie, especially near the end, is working on this big drug deal. So much going on in this movie. It's insane. And you can't say this this movie is slow at all because there's always something going on. And it's usually depraved. <laughs> it's just the most fucked up stuff. Like like Trevor, the rat. Yeah. I really enjoyed Trevor the rat. I mean, not for any good reason. I just kind of like his voice. Go on, Trevor! It'll be a pleasure, boss. Very good. And it turns out he's, uh, he's filming porn in the theater basement. <laughs> not just any type of porn. Like, really hardcore BDSM. Co- was it a cockroach? Like, whipping a cow. Yeah. So cockroach cow sex. Oh. Yeah, uh, guys, guys, this brings me to a new segment I'd like to introduce to B-Movie Mania. Oh. It's a little something called right. Kink Tank. Mm-hmm. Kink Tank. Me um, So I want to talk about the, uh, the breast bondage slash animal play slash impact play that was going on during that scene. In the scene, we see a cockroach whipping a tied up cow who has a, a, a BDSM leather strapped outfit which is which is clenching her udders. It's cupping them. So that they are bulging out. <laughs> bulging out. Which is a big part of breast bondage, which is the act of tying breasts so that they are either flattened against the chest or as they so they bulge. Which is which is, you know, for some people something they enjoy very much or they're into. Now impact play, just so you know, is a part of sensation play dealing with impacts such as whips, riding crops, paddles, floggers, etc. Uh, in this case it was a whip from a cockroach. Now I don't quite know if this really applies to this because these are all puppets and animals, but animal play, just so we all know, is when the submissive partner acts or dresses up like an animal, like a puppy or a cow. So this may not technically count within the meta of this, but as you mentioned, the furry community might very much enjoy the scenes that involve things mm-hmm. like this. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Mike. That was very informative. And what was that called? What was that segment called? Oh, that's Kink Tank. King Tank. Me <laughs> I really, really hope to hear more of that later on. <laughs> who's uh, who's editing that soundbite? Oh God! <laughs> so unfortunately, though, uh, <laughs> Trevor kind of has to think about making it a snuff film because the cow Daisy sits on the cockroach and kills it. Okay, I had a question about this. So, in order to dispose of the cockroach's body. They take it to um, this pit in the basement, and there's like a monster down there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. There's some kind of thing. I thought we were going to see more of that later, but I, I, is that just yes. a monster? I, I guess, unless they're saving it for the sequel. I thought it looked similar to the whale at near the end of the movie. Yeah, you're right. It did look it like did. a whale. It did, but right? it's not nearly as big. 
So yeah, no, they just throw it out yeah. into the a monster in a in a. We I don't know the, the this building <laughs> makes no sense, but uh, yeah, no there's hole. a pit in it. <laughs> Oh wait, it was a grasshopper, right? I think it was a grasshopper. Was it? I don't. I have no idea. I couldn't tell what half the shit was. I don't know. I have grasshopper in my notes. It's either some sort of grasshopper or uh, he's dead roach. <laughs> but Jay, you uh, you mentioned that your favorite character was the fly, and the fly is most heavily involved with Harry the hare. Do you want to talk about Harry a little bit and what his storyline is like? Oh yeah, Harry has quite a uh, uh, kinky lifestyle, and so. He finds himself sick and is afraid something is wrong. So he calls the doctor to get him uh, some tests and things don't look good. And the fly is buzzing around and hears the story. And he plans to get the scoop of poop <laughs> and write all about it in the newspaper. He, he typically hides out in his toilet. <laughs> It is a seemingly a favorite place of his. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> I like this because through the whole time he sees the doctor, just Dr. Quack. There's only one disease that fits these symptoms. It's the big one, Harry. No, no, not the big I'll one. I'll have to notify the health authorities. They want a list of your sexual partners. The big Big one. Oh, go. oh boy. The big one. And Harry gets very freaked out. Yeah. He is by I mean, he's got ten, maybe twelve hours to live. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> he's like what did didn't he say something like, oh, ten or twelve years? <laughs> hours. <laughs> hours. <laughs> and he just looks, looks nastier and That's nastier as the movie goes on. Just scabs and pus and every you know, Peter Jackson's early years were pretty disgusting, and this is total gross-out stuff. Yeah, at some point he's, like, popping sores <laughs> so he can get out there for the big production. Oh. The sores are just squirting onto the mirror, and it's it's just vile. It's pretty nasty. How is a puppet so gross? It's... <laughs> oh, God. And all around the entire time, that stupid-ass <laughs> fly. Hey, you feeling hairy? <laughs> Harry. <laughs> so, so we haven't mentioned kind of the main storyline or one of the main ones that goes through this. I was just going to bring up the audience identification character, Wobbert. <sighs> Wobbert, who? <laughs> well, I've got some opinions of Wobbert uh, because he he is supposed to he shows up and he is like you said the audience identification character. He's this timid little hedgehog and he's cute. He's got big eyes. Uh, he's one of the better looking puppets. And he has a wisp, and he, he calls himself Wobbit, and uh, it's cute. He's a cute little guy, and he's very shy, and he's the fish out of water in this scene. Everyone else is gross and, and you know, yeah. just kind of uh, just a gross, gr dark group of people that he's, he's fallen into because he's joining the chorus of the Feebles. He, he's just, he's the contrast for everyone else, along with his love interest, Lucille, who's a poodle, who's also new. So those are those are our two like innocents, effectively, our innocent characters. Except we find out that Wobbert is a fucking like uh, nice guy's. Uh, uh, why can't he's like an incel, and it's fucking. At some point, he turns into this fucking like gross like because Lu Lucille gets fucking Cosby Weinstein at some point by the rat. <laughs> She does, by the rat who wants to use her for porn because the walrus told her so. Best sentence I've said all day. Yeah, and then and then Wobbert walks in on it, and he's just like, blames her, and just fucking is just a real piece of shit to her. And at that point, I was just like, oh, fuck, I hate this character now. <laughs> how could you do this, Robert? Lucy, how could you do Robert? Wait! <laughs> Oh, can I say something else about Robert too? He is a he's a he gets assigned to work as the knife thrower. Wait, did we decide it was a turtle? It's officially a frog. The, the credits say frog. It is, okay, so he gets assigned to be the knife thrower frog's uh, assistant, having the knives thrown at him because the knife thrower frog is a junkie because of his he was a POW 
in mm -hmm. the prison camp. I want to talk about that whole sequence in a few minutes. <laughs> it deserves its own segment here. It does. It's a whole thing. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's just Robert is is a little nervous because he has to be the pincushion for um, the knife throwing frogs knives. Which, which should be known that the knife thrower killed his last assistant because he's got the shakes. Right. He's trying to buy more heroin from Trevor the Rat the whole movie, but he needs 50 bucks. I just want to bring up, before we move on from this, is the reason why Robert was a assigned to the knife thrower is because he kept fucking up during the <laughs> opera right. song. Did he? No, he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> no, he, he moved his flag and he was supposed to hold still. While everyone was oh, singing, and yeah, the director yeah, yeah. got mad at him because <laughs> Robert couldn't figure out like what his motivation was, and the director's like, "Just stand there and hold the flag," and he wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> he knows all about seventeenth yeah, yeah. century Italian mm -hmm. pennant bearers, and he just didn't understand why he would be <laughs> patrolling like that. Yeah, but Trevor the sleazy rat has had it out for him since the. Day one, oh, just, yeah. you know, just yeah. he showed up. The rat was a dick to him. He was watching. He was kind of fawning over Lucille the poodle uh, from the side of the stage, and the rat got mad at him. He just doesn't like him. So took the perfect opportunity to assign him to be dead <laughs> next. <laughs> <laughs> so now I would like to talk about the frog, the junky frog, and he tries to scam Robert uh -huh. out of some cash so he can afford his fix. And he's just listing off a whole list of drugs, asking mm -hmm. if Robert's got anything. I mean, including aspirin and Vicks Vapor Rub. And then gives Robert the life story about how he's been to Vietnam, <laughs> the Tet Offensive, and it suddenly becomes a puppet war movie. It becomes Puppet Deer Hunter. Yeah, it totally does. <laughs> well, or, or you might call it the Frogs of War. Oh, oh nice. Yeah, there you because go. Because that is what they called it when they filmed it, because they didn't have the budget, and they had to secretly film that sequence. Yeah. That's and right. folks, if this doesn't sound offensive enough yet, <laughs> if you were thinking, man, what this really needs is some racially insensitive puppets, this is your segment. Okay, Jay, Jay, now hold on. The puppets, yes, they may have, I'm not even going to describe the, the characteristics of which they don't look uh, okay, um, but surely, surely they got someone who spoke Vietnamese to do all the dialogue for this scene. Surely they did. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> oh. Oh. Listeners, you can't see his big puppet head, but Jay's shaking his head no. <laughs> no. No, they get just some, uh, I'm, and I'm not going to impersonate what they do. No. And, and Hudson <laughs> is not going to put a clip in this either, because it's not okay. <laughs> it's not okay. You haven't been to hell and back. Now. Oh, you've been to Vietnam. I saw the worst of it, kid. Definitely not. Definitely not. Because especially because you can't really see the translation with the subtitles. Because <laughs> you really, if you can't see the screen, you really miss a lot in the racist-sounding dialogue of the puppets debating the merits of small-scale capitalism at the village level in a so in a socialist economic system. Moments before the movie turns into that last scene from Deer Hunter. I think maybe a safe way to describe what they sound like is the Charlie Brown teacher wah 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 stuff, but <laughs> racially insensitive. Yeah, that's a pretty good description. <laughs> Without actually uh, doing it, which we won't do, and putting a clip in, that's kind of how it sounds. Just imagine the worst sounding. Uh, never mind. We're saying too yeah. much. We're giving this too much time. Please continue. <laughs> but, okay, it, yeah, and so it becomes the deer hunter where. They play Russian roulette and everything, and there's an escape. It's a whole story. I'm going to say, it, it looks really good. I mean, that the Deer Hunter stuff <laughs> looks like, looks like sure. the Deer Hunter. It's great. It's, they did a really good, did a really yeah. good job on that yeah, part. He's, yeah, he's got a bandana on his head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, so yes. it, it does uh, manage to, uh, the story manages to get 50 bucks out of Robert so that... Uh, <laughs> the frog can buy his smack. He's like, any donations, please? And Robert gives him like a buck or something. And he looks at it and goes, uh, 50 buck minimum donations. <laughs> <laughs> and Robert gives it to him. Well, it's because earlier on, Trevor wasn't going to give the, the guy his fix because he's $50 short of what he owes him. So yeah. he's got to get that $50. We haven't also talked about the other main character of the film, the heroine, if you will. The drug as the character? Yes. No, no, Heidi, the, the hippopotamus. 
The hippo, of course, yes. the star of the show. The Miss Piggy of Feebles. You want a piece of the pie, but you don't want to share with me. You want a piece of the pie, but you'll never get nothing for free. You better watch what you say, because it ain't my recipe. Well, I, I'd like to point out that Heidi is is also one of the, I think, more sympathetic characters in it, because... For the whole movie, she is just taken advantage of and, like, beaten down. And at no point does she really do anything wrong. She's desperate at times, but, like, she's not, like, a bad person. She's just craving attention, and everyone has decided that she's past her prime, and they hate her, and her boyfriend has moved on, and they fat shame her throughout the whole movie. And it's just, you know, it's just she's, she's like, the sympathetic character as well. Her and Lucille, I think, are the two, like, sympathetic. For a while. Well, I think she's. I think what happens by the end that she does, is she ha- it's fine. <laughs> Everyone has what they okay. get coming to them. Every single one of them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is true. That's true. We'll debate that later. Yeah, but she doesn't want to do the show because Bletch is cheating on her because she mm-hmm. full on catches that cat blowing Bletch under his t- desk. But she's not mm-hmm. going to do... Sh- she's done. She's done with the show. The, she doesn't care about the network deal. Nothing. But Bletch has to go do this drug deal. Uh, the, with the whole golf thing, they set up the deal. But then when they get the drugs, it turns out it's Borax. Yeah. It kills the aardvark. The, the sleazy aardvark who ends up being like a porn star. Uh, who's always, throughout the entire film, is sniffing underwear every time you see him. Well, what do you know? It's Dennis on a smelly minge binge. Oh, gosh. Sure, Dennis. Have a whiff of these. They've got a real distinctive bouquet. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why he makes it in the movie. And and how does that Aardvark uh, film shoot go, Mike? Oh, oh well, it's time for King Tank. King Tank. Me <laughs> Well, see, yeah, because since the cockroach died, or grasshopper, or whatever it is, they, they're no longer doing the whipping stuff anymore. anymore. They're doing what's known as nasal sex, um, which, <laughs> as far as I can tell, and I am by no means a professional or a doctor, I, I couldn't find that on anything, including Pornhub. What they do end up doing is naming the film they're making Anal Antics, which has nothing really to do with what was going on in the scene, but I would like to point out that Anal Antics, if you search for that exact specific phrase in Pornhub.com, sponsor, maybe, future sponsor, um, if you look for that, you will get precisely eight hits on the website, and one of them specifically is called Dungeon Furry's Foxtail Anal Antics. And uh, I just think that might be useful for if there's any furries listening that have been enjoying this movie and, and oh. the pornography involved. They might want to look that one up. Yeah, and what happens in what happens with the artwork in the cow, by well, the way? He, he just nose oh. jizzes all over her. <laughs> See, that's one of those sentences where if somebody's scrubbing through, I hope it lands <laughs> on that one. Yeah, but that aardvark, as you were saying with the drug scene, he gets, he comes into the room while they're testing the borax, and he's he's asked to test it, and his just nose just melts off in a very disgusting manner. <laughs> <And> he dies. <laughs> and so Bletch is pissed, so he rounds up Trevor and his bulldog bodyguard, and they're going to go kick some ass down at the docks where the, uh, the actual drugs are. i got to say, as they're on their way out, that's when Bletch finds out that Heidi is not going to do the show. So Bletch has to take a little... <laughs> take one for the team. God. He's like, hang on, I can't get the drugs yet. I gotta, gotta, make sure, <laughs> gotta make sure the show goes on. And he's just an ass and seduces her, and everyone's listening in as they're just going at yeah, it. Like, I feel so bad for Heidi. <laughs> like, she, she obviously is just... She's just broken, and and yeah. and he just goes, "Oh, I want to have sex with you now," and so they do. And everyone, like I said, everyone's outside listening, but also fuck all of them too because they know what's happening in there, and they're just waiting. And when he comes out, he's like, "The show will go on." They're just cheering and they're excited about it. <laughs> Yay! Somebody call the network. The show will go on. <laughs> No one feels like this is wrong. No, not a single person has a conscience in this fucking movie. 
So they go to the drugs, and the drugs are on the wharf. And I gotta say, yeah. on on paper, crabs look like they make excellent guards for your drugs. <laughs> <laughs> on paper, the crabs look pretty fucking good in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> like they're big, full body crabs standing up on like like a like a Zoidberg would look, except for like they have hard shells and they look pretty good. <laughs> and so they're they're gonna get the drugs from uh, from Mr. Big. I think they said his name was right. Yeah, and the yeah. whale is Mr. Big, right? Correct. That's actually the it's yep. not the warthog. No, the warthog yeah. is named something else. I, I enjoyed um, Mr. Big, and I enjoyed the giant spider that lands on the car. That was pretty cool. What? Okay, what's up with the spider? <laughs> It's a giant spider. No, 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 no. Every fucking creature in this movie, size-wise, makes sense. Everyone <laughs> is proportionally to the other. The, the rabbits are small. The hippo's big. The walrus is big. The elephant's big. No, dude. The, the, the bulldog was a full-size human. Okay, the bulldog was a little big. But the spider is the size of, like, two or three cars. It's true. And yeah, a spider normally, at its biggest, what, a biggest spider span is what? Leg span is like 12 inches, maybe tops. Maybe more. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a spider doctor. Mike, when you give a spider a regiment of drugs consistently... It will become a gigantic kaiju spider. That's a good point. Yeah, and come on, come on. With a name like Mr. Big, are you going to hire a small spider? Or are you going to hire a big spider? You need a big spider. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> and it was cool. But they do kill the spider, and they're driving off, but Mr. Big shows up. So, Jay, how do they escape from Mr. Big? Well, sometimes the best defense is a best offense. And sometimes the best offense is driving your car through the whale. They drive their car into the whale's mouth and come out the back end. Everything makes sense now. And it takes a while. Like, they almost get lost inside the whale. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can't imagine what it was like building a set where you were like, all right, this is the uh, guts of the whale that the characters are going to drive through. We have a walrus and a rat because the dog, the the, oh, the spider kills the uh, bulldog and bites his head off. Yeah. So the walrus and the rat are fleeing in a stretch limo type car driving yeah. through a, a whale that's what happens and they said so they had to build a set <laughs> that must have been really cool though to be honest the set looked like they took a bunch of red sheets and draped them over the car <laughs> yeah and just shook them <laughs> but it told the story it was meant to be told you know this kind of brings us up to the uh the climax of the movie where everyone has a happy ending the show is a smashing mm -hmm. success they're picked up by the network, and mm -hmm. they're given, like, what, like a five-year deal yep. or something like that? I think that's how it how it goes. Happy ending for everyone. Oh, I might have... You disagree, Mike? I might have seen a different movie than you, I think, actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, well, uh, what happens, Mike? Tell us all about the show. Well, I mean, they start the show, the, the, the final, the pe televised performance, and uh, it starts out good. Things look great. Yeah, they they are. Yeah, uh, e but even before the f the show ends, like the network is real quick to pick it up because the show starts falling apart after that. Uh, specifically, after at some point, uh, Heidi <laughs> does a great performance. I think she sings "Garden of Love," one of her big hits, and uh, goes back to Bletch's office to be like, "Let's get a let's get a quickie in." And then uh, he uh, is just real nice to her, right, guys? <laughs> nope. He is mm. finally done with her. He shuts her down. Yeah. He has his show, and he doesn't need her anymore. God. He just fucking rips her a new one. He does. That's, that's where she kind of starts to lose it, but that's really not what makes the show <laughs> go off the rails. No. Harry the Rabbit, <laughs> who at this point, his face just looks like a disgusting mess. He just wants to do the show before he dies. He's got to go out on top. He wants his legacy left yes. intact. As he goes out. Exactly. And so his whole thing is he comes out of a carrot. The carrot opens and he, his nasty face comes out and he starts puking all over the stage. This is live television, folks. Live yeah. television. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody starts to panic. Mm -hmm. And that's what gives the, the Fox director the idea to do his song about... Uh, what, uh, just play the clip again, Chris. Just play, yeah. play a second of that. He wouldn't dare... Christ, he's not. Oh, yes, he is, boss. So 
catchy tune it's yeah. so good oh so good. i love that song but meanwhile heidi finds uh, a machine gun in bletch's office well hold on I, I think it's important to to highlight all of heidi's heidi's plight because after bletch fucking just tells her he doesn't need her anymore she's through she's finished she'll never work in showbiz again that whole speech uh she tries to kill herself she's at a low point. yeah she's at a low point so she decides she's going to hang herself but even even God is body shaming her because when she hangs herself, she just breaks through the floor and falls down to the next level. <laughs> yes. Where she finds a gun. She finds, yeah, Bletch's stash of guns that he used to, yeah. you know, take to the drug deal. Yeah. And she's got a uh, full metal jacket at that point. Yep. Set off by the cat. Yeah, Samantha the cat comes in. Yeah. Yeah, the cat says that she should kill herself, right? Yep. And yeah. Heidi... Now armed with a machine gun, ain't having none of it. Mm -mm. And she goes all Rambo mm -mm. on the cat. Not just on the cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's about here where we find out that Harry was misdiagnosed. Yes. He just has bunny pox. <laughs> yeah. Bunny pox. He's not, he doesn't have the I big mean, one. the big one and bunny pox are you often confused. So, you know, I'm really glad. I really rejoiced with Harry when I found out that he was going to live and he could be on the show right up until the moment Heidi just blows him away with the machine gun. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, this so we're at the most controversial part of the film yeah. I would I would argue. Oh god. And I love it because as Heidi goes on this rampage throughout the the theater on live television, it's set to the tune of the Fox's <laughs> Sodomy song. Yeah. And it's really it's it's really beautiful. Just the It's quite yeah. a juxtaposition. <laughs> with a, a beautiful song mixed with the scenes of carnage and mayhem going on as Heidi just fucking tears up everyone. It's just mega mass puppet oh, shooting. God, it is beautiful. Blood and guts everywhere. All the characters, pretty much almost mm -hmm. all of them die. There are a few survivors. Including a worm that we have not mentioned at all in this entire episode. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Arthur. yeah! The, the other redeeming yeah. character. Arthur the worm is a sweetheart and very nice yep. and all he's trying to do is help people. Yep. That's all he does. At no point is he a bad boy. Never. He's the stage manager. And uh, he survives. He, ma he makes it. He makes it through. Yeah. Along with Robert and Lucille, who have since made up because Robert realized the uh, error of his ways. Right. <sighs> and then, you know, he realizes that nothing was wrong anyway. And she, you know, yeah. the the poodle really didn't yeah. do anything with the rat. Yeah, he he really pulled like a, a like a like a fucking incel's dream of <laughs> of of knight in shining armor coming in and saving the damsel in distress, even though he was a piece <laughs> of shit to her before. It's it's just it's so infuriating that fucking whole. I mean, there's there's some more disturbing things in this film than that, but that really just kind of yeah. got my goat. <laughs> well, and uh, to back up a bit before Trevor the rat dies. He and Bletch catch the fly, make a couple journalism puns while tearing off the wings. Well, what do you know, boss? A left-wing reporter. We can't have a biased press, can we, Trevor? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Th that's cruel. Yeah, they just <laughs> tear the wings off the fly and flush them. And then they go outside, and uh, Trevor is blown away also. Yes. That's the, like, tense scene of Trevor is gonna... What is he? Does he have a gun, too? He's, yeah, he's gonna kill Heidi, I think. Yeah, yeah, because cause Heidi shoots Bletch, he falls from the balcony, but then he, like, tries to make up to, with... Uh, it's, it's He's playing with her again, and then Trevor comes out and, like, attacks, and then Bletch is like, kill her! Like, just... Just, fuck, ugh. Yeah, and Robert <laughs> swings down and hits Trevor, and that's right. Then Heidi ends up shooting Trevor and then killing Bletch for good. I believe. Yeah, happy ending. And even I mean, Sid the elephant. I mean, the chicken 
is a yeah. casualty of this whole murderous spree. But Sid, I mean, at great cost to himself, his he is shot to hell, but he saves his son. Yeah, and he survives. It's true. As we find out, because uh, one thing that's really good is they don't leave anything open-ended here. They show us after the movie, before the credits roll, we find out what happens to each of the surviving characters after the uh, the Meet the Feebles massacre. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and we learned that Heidi... I gotta say, life is fucking cheap in this <laughs> feeble sport universe because she only gets ten well, years in jail. That's maybe the the puppet court needs an overhaul. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe they do. Maybe, and you know, Robert and Lucille live happily ever after, and Sid the elephant with his son is fine. Even even the fox goes on to uh, to write a book, yeah, about the uh, the whole experience with the mm-hmm, movie mm-hmm. deal and everything. I just hope that he's able to work his sodomy song into any sort of, <laughs> of movie course. that's made. You that know it was. <laughs> and Arthur the Worm. Oh, Arthur yeah. the oh. Worm also lives. And Arthur the Worm. Oh, yeah. He got a reward for uh, his service in the uh, the arts and, you know, lived ha- retired and lived happily ever after. So, yeah, if it sounds a bit like this review, uh, this discussion was a little all over the place, the movie itself is yeah, a little it all really over is. the place. So the only way to really get the most out of this is you, you've got to watch it which brings me to rating time all right well you know i was gonna i was thinking about rating scales and we totally forgot to t- I, was, I was gonna pick one that totally worked with the uh the scene where heidi is trying to get with back with Bletch before he dumps her and you get the full topless Heidi like <laughs> all on yeah full on hippo tits and I was gonna go with that for the rating <laughs> hippo tits but <laughs> all right it sounds like we're uh, maybe I should go with my instincts so we're gonna rate this from one to 100 hippo wow. tits all right all right Jay I uh why don't you go oh first? I don't want to go first <laughs> I don't know <laughs> I I don't know um it is completely insane, this movie. I, I can say I have never seen anything like it, and there's value there for that. I, I do feel it is, you know, for B-movie fans, it's kind of essential, you know, um, just for the shock and awe of it. There is a mass shooting, and I, I wasn't sure how to feel about that, but uh, as Mike pointed out, they're all pretty disgusting characters that get killed, I guess. Maybe that makes it not better. I don't know. I had a lot of fun watching it just because it was so weird. Um, 88. I'm going 88. Hmm. All right. Wow. Nice. Nice. All right. Mike, how many uh, how many hippo tits are you going to give us? Oh, boy. Fine film? Well, hmm. I mean, we all know it's going to be more than two because each hippo tit is huge. So <laughs> I got to do the calculations in my brain uh, for that. But in general, like Jay said... It, it is kind of I, if you're into this kind of shit, man. Like it's kind of essential. I mean, it's interesting to see where Peter Jackson came from, because uh, <laughs> this thing's a fucking doozy. But is as frantic and and fast paced as this movie kind of is, I, I couldn't help but find myself a bit bored throughout it. There is a lot of weird shit that goes on and a lot of just. I don't know, stuff, but I was a little bored throughout it, and I've, I've seen it a few times in the past, and I watched it twice for this fucking recording. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, anyway, I, I think I think people should watch it. I think I'm going to be a little more conservative with my, my number of hippo tits, though. I mean, it, there is a lot of sex in this movie, so I'm going to give it a good, solid 69. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> nice. No, I, I agree with everything Jay said, Mike. Uh, I, I I'll disagree. I, it wasn't slow f- for me. I've I've seen this a couple times in the past. Also, I mean, it's been twenty years. I remember it being just. I mean, it is so bizarre and weird. But I remember it being not as good as I thought it was this time around. I really. I mean, I was I was into it this time. This was. I mean, it's there's no real <laughs> redeeming value to this movie. It's just yeah. insanity from start to finish, and it's really cool to see where Peter Jackson started. And you can see, like, I mean, this is where he, uh, like, uh, Richard Taylor, I think is his name. He worked with him on the Lord of the Rings. You see, like, the craftsmanship and the relationships he started making in his films, starting from here, that would carry on to the Lord of the Rings. And I really like seeing it from a historical point of view, but also it was just. For me, it was a lot more fun than I remembered. So, way more watchable, and I was I was into it the entire time. So, I'm gonna go a little closer to Jay's and go 86 
hippo tits. Man, I did not expect to be the highest <laughs> on that. <laughs> can I also, can I say too, like, I think this movie more than anyone we've ever watched, like, the needle for me, for, for the rating, from like 1 to 100, mm-hmm. as I think about it, it varied more. <laughs> like, usually with, with most of the movies we watch, I'm like, okay, I can, I figured out kind of like where I, I am. With this one, like, even though I said it, 88, like, I'm still like, well, but I don't know. Like, there's, <laughs> like, I, like, if I, uh, on another day, I might have it a lot lower. I, it's just weird. It, it's so yeah. weird. And it's not... And I think also maybe it helped because this is the first time I'd seen yeah. it, mm-hmm. you know, that I wasn't bored as much. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just, I'm all over the place. With this. <laughs> yeah. I'm scattered like a group of depraved puppets. <laughs> yeah. That's a wrap for this one. I mean, we can play sodomy one more time, maybe. <laughs> Sodomy it might just improve your sex in the heart and the follow The fundamental is fine difficult to swallow So join me as I sing of an activity that's fun Open up your ring and try it from to bum 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 sodomy Let me tell you. Do you guys remember the year 1995? <laughs> no, I do. Do you remember maybe a, a super awesome action hero named Don the Dragon Wilson? I do. Yes. Well, buckle up, buckaroos, because here's a 90-minute film where a scientist brings virtual reality characters to life. Two are women from a cyber sex game site. The third is a warrior with plans to unleash the rest of the bad guys from the virtual reality underworld. Dom the Dragon Wilson must defeat the impending threat while learning to interface with one of the cyber sex babes. It's wow. virtual combat. It's on Amazon Prime. And we're fucking watching this motherfucker. Sweet. Oh, oh my God. Uh, I'm looking forward to this one. Dude, that plot outline sounds like the outline of Caprica. If all three of us don't give this movie 69s across the board, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> awesome. Well, let's, uh, let's hope it stands up like like Hologram Man. Similar plot, I'm hoping. <laughs> but hope so. yeah, we'll see. I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Well, all right. Well, there we go. First episode of season three. Down the hatch. Down the whale mouth. <laughs> Mr. Big. <laughs> Oh, I love we didn't even really get into the, all the sexual innuendo and just sh- stupid things characters It's constant. Say. It's, it's nonstop. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll save those for the listeners to experience on their own. But, but I hope everyone had a good time <laughs> listening this time. Uh, Mike, do we still have t-shirts for sale? Uh, let me check. Type, 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 type. Yes, we do. We have lots of shirts. We got cool logos. We got cool cartoons by uh, by Johnny K. The artist did that. And we also have sweaters. Uh, you can get two different, uh, similar but different designs you can get on our site at store.bmoviemania.com. I see you're wearing a puppet size sweater right now. Looks nice. Yeah, it's perfect. It was, it, it, we have all sizes, even puppet sized. And Jay, is there any place people can do to maybe give us a sort of review? Everywhere. You can go to your favorite podcasting service, the one you're probably listening to right now if you're hearing us, and, you know, give us a good rating, give us uh, comments. We really appreciate it. It helps us out, helps us get noticed by more people, so they say. That's the legend. So um, we would really appreciate a good review and some nice comments. Reach out to us. Mm-hmm. Hudson, is what do people need to do if they want to like follow along, if they for some reason aren't following us elsewhere? They can follow us on Twitter at BMovie Mania. No, BMM Podcast. <laughs> no, BMM Podcast. I don't know this. I don't run the <laughs> BMM Podcast. BMM Podcast. <laughs> we're, on, we're on Instagram also at BMovie Mania. <laughs> BMovie, there we go. Yes. Twitter and Instagram, I get those confused all the time. (laughs) 
We have a Facebook page. You should like us. Search for B Movie Mania. YouTube's good too. We got a YouTube stuff. We do. Ch you can check out a bunch of stuff on YouTube. We're gonna start uploading. Right. We're expanding. Check it out, everyone. One thing I wanted to mention, um, we didn't get to talk about one of my favorite songs from the movie, so I was hoping that could play us out. Uh, is it the, the one leg one? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I got one leg missing. <laughs> one leg missing. All right, well, here we go. One leg right. missing. Play See you next way time, out. everybody. Goodbye. Sand hopper uh, bathing in the sun, a dancing and a hopping, having lots of fun. <laughs> a bit of sand landed in that hopper's eye, and a little sand hopper said, My oh my, I got one leg missing. I got one leg missing. I got one leg missing. How do I get around? Shiny, shiny fishy in the ocean blue. They swam into a sewage pipe, poo, poo, poo. Said, I'm in the shit, I better take a dive. Stuck his head out of the water. One leg missing. One leg missing. I got one leg missing. How do I get around? All right. Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydy? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Said I better split and miss two was two. The bull began to chorus that we woo woo woo. I got one leg missing. One leg missing. I got one leg missing. Which is clenching her udders, bulging out, bulging out. Which